fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. And um, Tan, how are you today? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing good, doing good. It's a busy day for me today. Busy day. So, okay, guys, let's go ahead and and get started. Um, Luis, I've got some echo coming from you. I can hear myself, so um, I muted you for a minute. When you're ready to talk, just go ahead and unmute yourself, and everything's good. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shanae, and I am from the United States, and I live in California. And um, today we are going to be um, looking at things that you might find when you take um, an English um, an English test. Um, so like the TOEFL or whatever test you might be studying to take. Um, and if you're not studying to take a test, no worries because this class is pretty much all about reading and writing. So it'll still improve your skills. So this is really freaking me out with my webcam being all slow. I hope we get through class. Um, so, okay, guys, let's have everybody introduce themselves. Um, Abdu, we'll talk. We'll we'll start with you. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Abdu Basso. I'm from Morocco. I live in Casablanca, and uh, I'm a computer programmer. Very nice. Good to see you again. And Eric. Yeah. Would you like to tell everybody where you're from and something uh, about yourself? It's, it's, uh, sorry, I don't hear uh, what was mentioned. Okay. Uh, so I'm Eric. I'm from Slovakia. I'm a student uh, now, and uh, it's it's good to be here because. Um, I want to improve my English skills, exactly fluence of English, of speaking. Good, awesome, good. Well, you've come to the right place. And um, Luis. Hello. Okay. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Carlos. Uh, I am from Colombia, Bogota. Uh, I am I am thirty years old. Uh, well, um, I joined your class because I need to improve my English, I need to practice, because I need to improve my pronunciation, my listen, because uh, now my listen is so bad, so I need to improve. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, welcome to class. Welcome to class. Okay. And Mauricio. Good afternoon, Shane. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mauricio Rodriguez. I'm from Colombia. I live in Bogota as well. Uh, it's raining right now here in Bogota, but it's a good day anyway. Um, I'm ready to learn more English. Awesome. Good. The rain is coming here as well. In fact, it might even snow tonight. Ooh. So I know Ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it. And the next after today, the next three days, I it's my day to take care of the horses. I always get the day to take care of the horses, and it's raining. I hate it. Take it, Lena. Come the here. Winter. I can't leave them though. My mom would be very upset with me. Um. <laughs> so and Miguel, Miguel, good to see you. Good to see you too. Hello, everyone. You know, the insider Miguel is in the in the building. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm Miguel. I'm from Colombia as well. You know, um, what else? I want to improve my English skills because I think it is. It, I first I, I do it because I like it, and it would be helpful you know, in the future for my career and everything. Very nice. Awesome. Good. I'm glad you like it. And Santiago, where are you from? Uh, hey, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Santiago and I live in Ecuador. Um, I live in a city called Cuenca. Uh, it's a beautiful city. And uh, I'm here because I really need to improve my English skills and 
my listening skills and writing as well. And yeah, nice to meet you all and hope we have fun here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I think my classes are pretty fun. So um, hopefully this one won't be an exception. Um, by the way, I'm teaching games in a couple hours. Do you guys want to play Jeopardy again, or do you want to take a break and play something else? Mm, what about what about Pictionary? I was thinking of doing like a, a medley of games. Like we would start like 10 minutes with Hangman, 10 minutes with Geography, do some Pictionary, and just kind of do a bunch of different ones, and still have teams. So it's like a relay race of games. I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll figure that out. So, okay. um, but those of you who are normally in my games class, I thought I would ask. Uh, they are, so. they are, we, they are, they are very fun. They are very, we are, we are having a lot of fun. Yeah, the, they are the fun. Best. The best. Yeah, they are fun. <laughs> so, do you want to not do Jeopardy today? Do you want to do something yay, else? Yay, Jeopardy, yay. Okay, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys, okay, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, okay, so... Tan, can you introduce yourself to class for everybody? Hello, everyone. My name is Tan. I am from Vietnam. And I love doing math. That why, that why I choose accounting as, as my major in school. Yes. And um, how do you like this cold California weather, Tan? It's pretty cold. I know, I don't like it, huh? Is it raining? Yeah. You're in LA, right? No, Is it, no it's not. It's, it's getting darker, but okay. it's not yet. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's on its way. It's on its way. So, all right, guys. And then, let's see. I think... Is it Sofiane? Yes, yes, it's Sofiane. Sofiane, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Good, and where are you from? I'm from Algeria. Algeria, nice. Yes. All right, awesome, good. Okay, guys, let's get started. So, like I said, we're going to be um, doing kind of some test uh, test taking strategies today, as well as just simply um, improving our reading and writing skills. Because if we improve our reading and writing skills, then taking English tests is a lot easier. So. Does this need to be bigger for you guys, or is it big enough? It's big enough. It's it's big enough. enough. That's okay. It's um, big enough? Okay. Yes. Okay, so we, there's. I don't know if we're going to get through everything, because there's like 10 exercises on this, but we'll do as much as we can in the time that we have. So um, the first exercise, Miguel, can I get you to read the instructions for me? Yes. Exercise, oh. Exercise one. Looking for information at speed. The bar chart below shows the results of a questionnaire to find why native and non-native speakers of English at a university in Australia learned languages. The questionnaire was given to thousand students. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's actually questionnaire. Questionnaire is how we say Question, that. Questionnaire. Questionnaire. Mm -hmm. So here's a, it's a bar graph. So the idea is, you know, when you're taking a test, usually it's time. So you have to be able to extract information rather quickly from it. So what's the name of the bar graph? Reasons for learning languages. Mm -hmm. Reasons for learning languages. And over here, what is the, how are we measuring it in terms of what? Person. Per percentage, uh huh. The percentage of people. Yeah. Okay. So here is, and let's look at the, this is called a key. The bottom part is called a key. Mm -hmm. um, so you have native speakers is the dark. And non-native speakers is the lighter one. So, um, Abdu, can I get you to read the reasons, all of these reasons why students gave for studying English? Uh, okay. Useful for, uh, for work. Improve our language. Enjoyable. 
important for studying, useful for travel, improve personal development, improve job prospective prospects. Good, yeah. So just by a quick glance at this graph, who who has the higher percentages for, for all of these? Native speakers or non native? Non native. Non native. Mm -hmm. Good. So take a just kind of look at that for about thirty seconds and, and try to extract as much information as possible from this. And I have some questions for you that we're going to see how well you looked at the uh, at the graph. So um, as you can see, this is for the IELTS test. This is all stuff that will help you if you plan on taking this test in the future. Um, I'm just a fan of simply um, enhancing your skills and to me it doesn't matter what test you take. If your skills are there, you'll do well. So um, question number one, what does the bar chart show? Oh my God! So there are some reasons. <laughs> a, question, a questionnaire. Uh, wait, I heard somebody say reasons. Yeah. Who was that? I, I was. Who's that? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't see you guys when I'm on screen. Was that Sorry. Eric? Yes. Eric? Yes. 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 Reasons. Reasons for what? Uh, why people learn English? English. Mm -hmm. So, do you know what we call that when we ask a bunch of people questions besides a questionnaire? A survey. Yes, a survey. Yes. So the bar graph shows the survey. the what of a survey. Results. Yes. Yes. The bar graph shows the results of the survey exactly. How many students participated in the survey? 1,000. Yes. Yeah. Good. 1,000. Where yes. were the students from? Australia. 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 Exactly. Which of the two groups was more positive about language learning? Non-native. Uh, Non-native speaker. Non-native speaker. Uh huh. Which reason comes top among non-native speakers of English? Useful for work. For work, yeah. Mm, no. Uh, it's kind of a tie. Yeah. Improves your prospects. Yeah, useful for work, um, useful for travel, and improves job prospects. Mm hmm. Now, when you have, when you're taking a test, obviously you're going to have the graph right next to you. So it's not like this case where we're having to go back and forth, and I'm basically quizzing you for for looking at it for ten seconds. So um, it'll be a little, it would be a little bit different. Um, which reason? Oh, we just did that one. Just kidding. Um, what is the percentage? Eighty percent or seventy? Mm. One. Uh, one, it's 100. You guys it's, are all uh, around. Number. Yeah, can you go up again? 90. It's 90. 90 something. Yeah, 90%. 90%. <laughs> yeah, and improves job prospects. We might say what? 92? 91, 92%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What percentage of native speakers found language learning useful for work? Native speakers. What percentage of native speakers? Native speakers. Like thirty percent? Fifty. Fifty percent. Fifty two. Yeah, 50, 52. Yeah, exactly. Good. Um, what percentage of second language speakers found language acquisition useful for work? Mm, a lot. Mm. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 90%. Mm, 90. 
Yeah, 90%. Oh, my gosh. 90%. Mm -hmm. um, which reason comes top among native speakers? Which reason? Improve job prospects. Uh huh. And what's the percentage? 60. 60%. 60%. 60%. 60%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which reason comes bottom among native speakers? Mm. Um, enjoyable. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's the percentage? 20%. 20. 20%. 20 yeah. Good. Yeah, when I taught when I taught English classes in public school to native speakers, my students usually hated me. So. <laughs> it's not like you guys. They 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 can they hate hate learning English. They think it's awful. So um, it says to write sentences for each piece of information from the chart, and it gives us some examples. Um, can I get a volunteer to read those examples for me? Yes. Okay, go for it. The bar chart shows the results of the survey. 1,000 students took talk, talk part, uh, talk part in the survey. The students were from a university in Australia. Okay, keep going. Use the, use the sentence to, to help you make a continuous text example. The bar chart shows the results of a survey on on the re, on the reasons behind learning language among thou, thousand native and non-native uh, speakers of English at the University of Australia. Good. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of the first three questions, right? What I want us to do as a group is turn the answers to these into a text. So as we do this, I. I think the best way to go about this would be to um, I'll write it on the whiteboard behind me as you guys are coming up with the sentences and then um, we'll look at what we've come up with at the end. So let's start with which of the two groups was more positive about language learning. What was the answer for that? Non-native Native speakers. Non -native. Non -native. Right, non-native non -native speakers. So can someone give me a sentence explaining that piece of information? Non-native speaker was more positive about l language learning? Yeah, perfect. Non-native oh. speakers were more positive than, which? Than, than native speakers. We're more positive, yeah, we're more positive about language learning. Uh, which yeah. group is more interested to learning English? Okay. And so the next one. Um, which reason comes top among non-native speakers of English? We said it was useful for work. Mm -hmm. mm. Improve job. Improve the job prospects. Uh huh. So how could we make? How could we turn that into a sentence? Mm. Mm. Uh, most uh, positive uh, group about learning uh, about language learning is uh, is non-native speakers. No, we're already. Yeah, hold on one second. Let me come back. Let me come back there. Um, I'm in. I'm in my sweats, by the way, because it's cold here, so you can't make fun of my clothes. <laughs> 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 so I look like a bum. So okay. So um, we came up with this sentence for for number four, which is non-native speakers were more positive about language learning than native speakers. So um, we're on number five now, which is the fact that um, improving job prospects was the top reason. So how can we turn that into a sentence? 
Hmm. Oh. I didn't get it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we're we're basically Can doing the same thing for number five as we're doing for number four. We're Can you share the question again? Say that again? Can you share the question? Am I not sharing the question? Yes, I can't see it. Oh. It's frozen. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Number five. Yeah, number five. Which reason comes top among non-native speakers of English? And the answer to that question is what? Improve prospects. Job, job prospects. Improve. Right, improve job prospects. So give me a sentence telling me about that. Improve job prospect is top among non native speakers of uh, English. No. <laughs> no, that's that's close. You actually you, you would just actually pretty much reverse that. So um The reason that uh, comes top among non native speakers of English is uh, to improve uh, job prospects. Say that one more time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll, the, okay, the, I'll, I'll, it's kind of a conglom conglomeration of both. Okay, so the top reason non-native speakers gave for learning Eng English. Is. is to improve job prospects. Mm hmm Good. Okay. And what was the percentage again? 92. 92. 92%. So how could we maybe incorporate that piece of information into this? How could we change this sentence? It's like the Ninety-two percent of non-native speakers gave uh, for learning English is to improve job prospects. Prospects. With no, at the end, at the end, with no, no, no. There is no need to change it. Why? It would be at the end. You can say uh, the top three to non-native speakers gave for learning English is to improve with a percentage of 90, ninety-two percent at the end. Uh, no, no mm. native speakers gave the top yeah. reason for English. I'll tell you how I would do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll give it's you a clue. Hard. I I personally would say ninety percent of non-native speakers gave. We have to switch. We have to turn this around. Gave top reason. Gave improving. Gave improving job prospects. As their top reason for learning English. Mm, yes. When you start incorporating more information into one sentence, you have to be careful how you do your wording so that it doesn't because if it sounds too wordy or you start using a lot of passive voice or things like that, then you're going to lose your reader and people are going to have to um, read it over and over and over again before they understand what it is that you are talking about. So um, let's keep going. Let's do the next one. Okay, so we have two more questions. We have what percentage of native speakers found language learning useful for work and what percentage of second language speakers found language, language acquisition useful for work? So we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about this whole idea about language useful for work. We're just talking about the two different groups. So what is the percentage of native speakers that find language acquisition useful for work? 50. 52. 
Yeah, 52, right? And what about non-native speakers? 90%. 90%. Okay. <clears throat> Can someone come up with a sentence using um, that information? So 90% of the uh, non-native speakers gave importance, no, gave language. Le gave as gave a yes, second yes, language as yes. que decision useful for work. So. Let's see. Uh, in, ninety percent of non non native speakers said learning English is useful for work. Uh huh. Useful for work. And what could we say for the second part of that sentence? How could, here, so let me come back so you guys can see the board. I don't know why Google's being so slow today. Okay, so we have 90% of non-native speakers said learning English is useful for work. How could we add on to this sentence to talk about the native speakers? 20, uh, 52% of native speakers. All what, would, what would be a good linking word that we could use here? Although? But, maybe. Those are all good, yeah. And? Huh? First letter? Mm. However. Yeah. However, uh huh. I was thinking of the word, I know this is probably one you guys probably haven't heard use this in this way, but while, you could say 90% of non-native speakers said learning English is useful for work while only 52% 52. 52 of native, native spe speakers. speakers. I'm not going to waste time writing that whole thing. You guys get the idea. But yeah, you could use while, you could use however, you could use although, you could use but. Um, you could use and, but the effect of the comparison might not be as strong as if you used one of these linking words. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys having fun yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I find this stuff really fun, but that's probably why I majored in English and creative writing. So um, I love this kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, so let's keep going with this. Um, let's do 9 and 10. So which reason comes top among native speakers? Mm. Uh, job. Improve job prospects. Mm -hmm. Improve job prospects. And what's the percentage? 60. 60. 60. 60. Yeah. 60. No, I don't. Okay. Na native speakers. Native. Not non native. Native. Sorry. Uh, I misunderstood. No worries. No worries. Okay. So let's do a sentence with this. With these two. With 9 and 10. The reason that comes top among uh, native speakers is, uh, is to improve, uh, improve job prospects. Mm -hmm. What? It, but we got to remember we have to somehow incorporate the 60% in there. So what's another way we could say that? 60% uh, of native speakers found that, uh, said that uh, uh, improved job prospects is the, the top reason. Okay, so I have 60% of native speakers said improving job prospects. Was their top reason for language acquisition or whatever. My handwriting is getting worse as we go on. Okay, and which reason comes bottom among na native speakers? Do you guys remember? Enjoyable. Enjoy, yeah, enjoyment. Uh huh. Do you remember the percentage? Uh, 
20%. 20%, yeah. So what's a sentence, whoops, what's a sentence that we could um, make for those two? About native speakers, 20% and enjoyment. Twenty twenty percent of native speakers said the enjoyment is the was the bottom reason for a language acquisition. Close, close. You could say something like only twenty percent of native speakers. said enjoyment was their top reason for language acquisition. Top? Yes, because the way that the survey is conducted is when they ask you the question, you give your top reason. So only 20% of native speakers said enjoyment was their top reason, which makes it the bottom reason for all the native speakers that were surveyed. Yes, do you understand? Yes. Does that make yes, sense? Yes, I do. I do. Okay. okay, perfect. Awesome. Good job, guys. Any questions? If you ever get an exercise like this on a test, do you feel super prepared? <laughs> Uh, I have one question. Sure, yeah, please ask. Uh, why did you use uh, the past and not the present? Say that again? Why did you use the past and uh, not the present? Why did I use the past and not the present? Yes. Because the survey has already been conducted. It's already over. Yes. So we're so we're talking we're talking about what people have already said. So that's why we're using past tense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, you I'm trying to think if you could use say, but I don't think. Yeah. No. Stick with stick with past. Stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> stick with that. So all right. Let's see what we can do next. Oh yeah, I was hoping we would get to do this. This stuff's fun. Okay, so we have some jumbled text that you guys are going to actually figure out how to put the text in the right order so that this makes sense. Because right now it makes absolutely no sense. No sense. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So let's see. Can I get a volunteer to read the first paragraph, which actually does yeah. make sense? <laughs> yeah. May who was? Who was that? Was that Santiago? May I? No. Uh, no. It's Luca. Mauricio. Oh, it was Mauricio. Luca. Yes, I'm here. Oh, Luca. But, it was oh, Luca. Luca. Oh, Luca, okay. Yes. Go for it, Luca. Good to see you, Luca. Um, thank you. All right, um, I got to start until from the beginning until comes or I'll start. Um, read this first paragraph for me. All right. Uh, the bar chart shows the results of a survey on the reasons behind learning language among 1,000 native and non-native speakers of English at a university in Australia. Okay. So, this second paragraph, as you can see, is starting to not make any sense. So, the first phrase that we need to figure out how to get this in the right order is the chart striking most the feature of is that those students. <laughs> okay, who, can, who thinks that they can put this in the right order for me? Hmm. Charge by 
Those holes are students. Uh, maybe the chart is the most future um, of the of the other students. Mm -hmm. Any, any sense? The chart <laughs> is striking. Striking, yes. You're getting there. You're getting closer. <laughs> most of those students' features. Get no yet? Not yet. <laughs> Not oh, yet. Gosh. <laughs> Hold on one second, guys. Okay. Um. Okay. Keep going. Strike. Him. I'll give you a clue. The okay, pictures. The the, yeah, I got it. The, okay. the chart is tracking the feature. Oh, oh of, you're almost there. You're almost there, Miguel. You're almost there. Of most, of most, oh my gosh, I lost it. The chart tracking. I'll give you a clue. The second word is most. The second word is most. The second word. So it, yep. So it'll say the most. Oh, the most uh, striking feature uh, of the shot is the those students. Yeah. The, okay. <laughs> the most striking feature of the chart. There actually, there's a typo on there because they only have one the. And there should be two in there. The most striking feature of the chart. Is that those students? Student. Yes. Good. Okay, so the most striking feature of the chart is that those students. Have you ever heard that phrase? No. No? No, it was the first Which time. One? No, the first time. It's the first time. Okay, so a striking feature means like the most um, amazing okay. feature or like the most surprising feature of the chart. Okay? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. All right, let's try to unjumble this second part. So we have for mother not English whom there is tongue had a more positive attitude to language learning than native speakers. I'll give you a hint. Um, this part is correct. So it's just the white part that you're going to have to unjumble. Uh, whom, whom their, their mother tongue is? For whom? Um, for, for whom there is mother tongue? Uh, um, their mother tongue is not English. No. <laughs> oh, uh, I, know, one, I know. Yeah, I, I got it. Like native speakers had more positive. Have. Oh my gosh. It, Mauricio, no, what were I you going to say? Yeah. For whom their mother tongue is not English. Reverse that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which one for, is the one? for whom for, the, for whom English is not for, is for not whom yeah. mother tongue is not their mother, mother tongue. There you go. Yeah. So where is that? So here, hold on one second. I'm putting it on the board. Okay. 
So you would say, okay, so you have the most striking, the most striking feature of the chart is that those students for whom English is not their mother tongue. I wish there was an easier way to do this than just going back and forth with the screen share. Had a more positive attitude to language learning than native speakers. Okay, mm -hmm. so for whom English is not their mother tongue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know it's hard. I know it's hard, but just think of all the learning you guys are doing. So, you guys are doing good with it. You really are. You're doing good. Shanae, yes. sorry, this, this is for TOEFL or IELTS? IELTS. Okay. Yeah. What, what is the name of this uh, the exercise or, or test? To scramble? To yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm still becoming more familiar with um, what each test asks for you to do. Um, this exercise, this lesson plan was created specifically to help with um, reading and mostly with writing um, in the I, I E L, what is it, I E L T S? Is that right? I E L T S. I E L T S, right. yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. To be honest, and I'm pretty sure that they have these because they had like uh, on the same website that I get this from, which I would give it to you, but you have to be a subscriber, um, so I can't. But um, they actually have like practice tests. So if this is stuff that you guys are into, next time I do this class, we can even do a practice test if you want. Um, whatever you guys want, feel like will help you the most. Let's look at number three. So we have prospects is job improvement mentioned by just over 9% of non-native speakers as an incentive to acquiring languages. Oh, that's easy. I'm going to let you do the chance, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Hmm. It's even, to be honest, even I have to stop and, and sit and think about it. Um, okay. I was, I was checking because I have, obviously I have an answer key. Um, <laughs> so take a look, take a look at number three. Which word is capitalized? Improvement. Mm -hmm. We know that we're starting a new sentence. So which of these words do you think the sentence starts with? Improvement. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Improvement. So we know it starts with improvement. Improvement in job prospects uh, uh, mentioned mentioned by just over 90% of non-native speakers. As in the incentive to acquire language, which is... Woohoo! Nice job! <laughs> Improvement in job prospects. Say it again for me. Uh, improvement in job prospects uh, is, uh, is uh, mentioned by just over 90% of non-native speakers uh, as an incentive, incentive to acquire ling languages. Yeah, who said that? Who is that who's talking to me? Sophia. Nice job. Mm -hmm. Nice job. Good job. Yeah, perfect. Good. Sophia. Good, good. I teach kids on Sundays, and if some if, if you were a kid in my Sunday school class, I would have given you a sticker. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, that was awesome. Good job. All right, so number four. Four by closely usefulness followed travel and work and importance for studying at 90, 90, and just below 90, respect, respectively. Excuse me. Hello? Yes. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was frozen. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a long silence. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's thinking. Hmm. Okay, look at it this way, guys. So, we're saying we have improvement in job prospects is mentioned by just over 90% of non-native speakers as an incentive to acquiring languages. What do you think would be the most natural word to follow this? I just gave you the word. Followed? Language? Yes. Followed. Uh-huh. Followed by, by, followed by, travel followed and work. Wait, wait, wait. By, by travel or work closely. Followed closely by, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Travel and work. Uh, followed closely by, by, usefulness and importance. No, uh, followed by. Mm -hmm. Yes. Importance yes. for studying, no? I let me let's go back mm. up real quick. I forget which one was under ninety. That'll help us first of all. So we have work, usefulness, travel. Mm -hmm. They have the same for yes. percentage. So important for <laughs> studying is the last one. Oh. So. Okay, so we have followed closely by what? Travel and work. We're close. We're missing a couple words. Followed closely by travel, by travel and, work. and work. Ah, you guys are missing it. Missing it. Missing it. We're missing two words before it that come before travel and work. Mm. Say it again. The beginning. Yes, phones. Use, usefulness? Yes, followed closely by usefulness for travel and work. Yes. Usefulness. Yes. Yeah. It's like usage, importance, helpful. usefulness. Helpful. In this oh. case, usefulness means helpful. That helpful. by acquiring language, it's useful for work and travel because it will help you at work and while you're traveling. Mm -hmm. So, followed closely by usefulness for travel and work, uh, helpful for studying or whatnot. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not even paying attention to the chat in this class. What, what's, what are you guys wondering? No. No. Chat, no, the chat is in some other place. Oh, okay. we're, we're not paying attention to the chat right now. Okay. okay. Well, I see the ask her. She will tell you. I don't know if that's in reference to me or somebody else. I don't know. It was, it was a de uh, reference to Jenny. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Jenny. The, the, the only thing I wrote but maybe five years ago was the fact that, my, that I had to refresh my computer. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Yeah. Colingo is failing. Colingo chat is failing a lot. I have I know, to refresh. I know. I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not your fault. It's no, not no, my no. fault. It's not. <laughs> I, just teach, I, just, I just teach the classes. I have nothing to do with the technology <laughs> side. I'm sorry. All right. No worries. Okay. In this group, personal development improvement bottom 70% with comes. Hello? Okay, in this group, <laughs> personal development improvement bottom seventy percent with comes. I don't group. like the I don't like the right whoever wrote this I think is a terrible writer because they could have used a far better word other than bottom. 
Okay, pretend that pretend bottom says last and not bottom. Least. Pretend it in, pretend it says last seventy percent with comes. In this group personal improvement comes. Bottom seventy percent with development? No. 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 no, where the five is, the only three. four words that are jumbled are these four. So you have to put these four in order. Mm -hmm. In this group, 70%. Nope. In this group, personal development improvement is all fine. It's only the blue yeah. one that you have to redo. Uh, comes In this group, personal development improvement one. comes comes with comes bottom with 70%. Yay, Welcome. Mauricio gets yeah. a sticker. Yay. <laughs> yes, comes bottom with 70%. <laughs> I, um, I think the word bottom here is a really poor usage of the word bottom. Just from a writing standpoint, it makes it difficult um, to understand, and it sounds awkward. It would sound better if it said, in this group, personal development improvement comes last with 70%. But whatever. This is a good game. This is a good game, but with easy sentences. Yeah, exactly. I agree. <laughs> I agree. That that kind of like yeah. your other one that would take some time to uh, to do. Could, so, could, sorry. Could you could you make a survey, uh, or uh, how do you say that? Uh, yes, a survey asking what would be the uh, the, the best game to play later. Well, in your class. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can try. The thing is, is if we do if we do Jeopardy, I've got to like get get on the stick, which is an, an English idiom. We say get on the stick, which means I have to hurry up because it takes. I have to come up with the questions and everything, and that that takes me a little bit of time. Although since I found the Jeopardy archive website it makes my job a lot easier but some of those questions are hard I mean some of them I don't even know so yeah. um, some of them are hard but um, yeah I don't know I haven't decided I might save jeopardy for tomorrow because I'm only teaching one class tomorrow I'm teaching games at 11 a.m. my time so I think I'll save jeopardy till tomorrow and tonight like I said will be like a, a relay race of games. Well, everybody will be teams and we'll do like, um, like I said, we'll do like Hangman, Pictionary, um, games that we can, you know, in and out really quick. We might do categories. Categories is fun. Yeah. Categories is fun. Yes. Yeah, categories is fun. So I think that's what, what we'll do. Um, let's try to get one more sentence out of this before class is over. 30% said Jeopardy, 4% said. <laughs> 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 okay. What would you, let me ask you, Mauricio, what would you like to play this evening? Well, to tell the truth, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm I going to tell you the truth. I, I, I enjoy your classes all the time, I, even I, 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 um, with all the toys. <laughs> I know. Uh, this is an ex Colombian expression. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, but it's a good, it's a good expression. Don't worry. Okay, um, I'll take your word for it. Yes. No, I, I really enjoy your classes. I really enjoy your classes. So, for me, it's okay. For me, it's okay. Okay. All right. It'll be fun. Have I ever let you down? I've never let you down. Oh, no, you never I do. Think we have a lot of fun. In your That's classes. why. I like you. <laughs> well, good. Yeah, because you. I know. Teacher. Since everybody has such a good time, though, it's like so much pressure. I'm like, ah, oh, I have to come up with something really good, or they're gonna be like, ah, oh, Schnee, you're no fun anymore. No. I'm just okay. <laughs> so, all right. So we have this attitude contrasts acquisition sharply language with to that of native speakers, whose approval was lower than non-native speakers on all accounts. So, whose approval was lower than non-native speakers on all accounts is obviously okay. So, let's unjumble this. Hmm. 
Oh my, I don't have a clue. <laughs> oh my gosh. Does anybody have a clue about what the next word might be? Yeah, it's a little. I don't. The, it is. It's attitude. Uh, no, I think it is this acquisition. Contrasts. Uh -huh. No? No. Oh, it is this attitude. <laughs> yep, this attitude. Uh huh. This the attitude, attitude of contrasts nice. sharply. Oh wait, hold on. Who said this attitude of native speakers? Yeah. Well, this attitude of uh, nice. Yeah, this attitude of language ac acquisition. acquisition. Uh, mm -hmm. native speakers contrast sharply. Here, let me get this on the board cuz now I'm starting to confuse myself. Oh my god. Okay. This, this attitude this attitude of language native of language acquisition what do you think comes next so this attitude of language acquisition contrast yes. sharply sharply with native speakers. Yay! I got it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Finally. <Good job. laughs> Finally. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice, nice. Oh, whoops. This. Let me let me write down, please. Write it down. Oh, did I not have you guys on screen share? Was I yeah. the only one looking at it? Yeah. Or did I? I did. Yeah. Yeah. It was in a screen share. Oh, it was. Okay. Somehow it just went away. Okay. Good job, guys. Um, does anybody have any questions during the last minute? No. no. Do you have Do you have any links or or to to get to practice more these kind of these ex, these these exercises these I, this kind of exercises? I don't for this one, and I haven't looked. But let me look. Um, but, um, let's see, sentence jumbles. With all the toys mean means with all the equipment, with all 